and she was like well he told me that his mom forced him to go with you and I was like oh you're you're a dumbass <laughs> you're a dumbass oh okay Hey loves, my name is Afani and this is the Afani Be Gentle podcast. Today's episode is going to be something that a lot of people shy away from because some people just never get over it. I'm talking about breakups. Breakups can truly break your heart and it feels like you're literally going to die. It's the craziest thing because you're like, it's just a muscle, you'll get over it, blah, 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 blah. But that is not the case, especially when you have that young love. That young love can truly dictate how you see love in the future. So I'm going to give you a little backstory on my experience with love and heartbreak. So when I was in high school, I wasn't really dating because I went to a really small school and I didn't have that many options, to be honest. Like I wasn't going to date a younger classman or underclassman. I wasn't going to date someone who was just like straight up weird because if you're from LA, you know, you got a lot of weird people. And um, our circles were so small that by the time I was finally like, okay, maybe I might look at, I was, I wasn't interested. I really was not interested in anyone at my school. So for me, when I was introduced to this guy via one of my really good friends in high school, I was like, okay, he's older than me. He's cute. You know, he's stylish. He got a little bit gone for himself. I was like, yes, he played sports. I was like, absolutely, I will take it. And we started to date like pretty quickly. We went on our first date and then we were together. Like that's just how quick it went. And it never really dawned on me like what I considered, what was dating or what was the importance of dating or how I felt about dating. It was just kind of a, the thing to do. So I kind of just did the thing to do. Plus I'm really, a relationship type of person I like to be with one person that is it I can't stand like having to talk to multiple people and deal with multiple people and multiple personalities you got an issue today he got an issue tomorrow then he got I don't got time for that I don't got time for that so me when I was dating in high school it was very much like we didn't go to the same school we weren't in the same circles so if we had a conversation, our conversation would really go like, so what was your day like? And I would really not know what your day was like. Fast forward to us dating. Um, it was very interesting. Like I must admit, looking back on it, I'm like, what the hell was I doing? Like, why was I even dealing with this person? Because don't get me wrong. He was really cool. Like he was fun to be around, but he wasn't shit like he was not shit he wasn't shit looking back i'm like you weren't shit he was lying he was cheating he had a whole nother bitch like it was just you weren't shit and it really took me a while to kind of realize like girl what are you doing now some people their wow might be like a week or two or a couple weeks girl mine took two years okay it took two years i was like what the fuck am i doing baby like this is not it okay it's not it i dated him from uh i was 16 i was like a year and a half 16 to uh graduating high school which was 17 i graduated at 17 and so dealing with him, I was really like lost in the sauce. It was my first like relationship where he wasn't my first, but it was my first relationship where I was dealing with someone like intimately. And I just, I was digmatized child. I was very much digmatized and don't, don't ask me why. Cause I can't even remember why. So that just says a lot. Now, mind you, if you guys did not know, I'm 28 years old. So this was a long time ago. It was, it feels like a whole lifetime ago. That's how long ago it was. But I dealt with him and for a while, I was really just like up and down. Like, should I be dealing with this boy? Like, why am I continuously dealing with him? He's always on some weird shit. He always talking crazy. He be lying. Like, what am I doing? But for me because it was my first relationship that I was with someone and we were like you know intimate 
I just did not want, for some reason, did not want to let that go. And this goes to show you that at a certain age, you should not be getting it in, okay? Don't do it. Don't do it because you will literally lose yourself because you're having sex with someone. Like, it just sounds crazy as hell now thinking back on it. Like, you will literally lose yourself because you're romantically or intimate with them. And it's just bizarre because there's so many people in the world and instead of like being like you know what you're not treating me right let me move on to somebody else that will treat me right a lot of times we settle and we allow these people men and women to manipulate us and make us feel like ain't nobody gonna want you or ain't nobody gonna want you that's better than me and you're gonna be downgrading blah 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 so yeah just make sure when you're dealing with someone lesson number one make sure when you're dealing with someone you one don't start off with them like having sex because that just complicates things and two you understand who you are as a person and what you offer and what you bring to the table because once you understand what you bring to the table you will realize like if you can't match what I'm doing or if you're not doing more than me and you're not like we're not progressing in life why are we doing this this is a waste of our life this is a waste of our time and I'm not really one to say that things are a waste of time. I'm more like lesson learned. But at the same time, like child, sometimes we be wasting our time because we learned that lesson a long time ago. We just stuck on stupid at that point. So there. So yeah, we dated for a while. And um, I remember <laughs> looking back on it, I'm just like, what the... I was a whole clown. Like, this is crazy. Uh, well, he was the clown. I was just the fool to stick around in the circus. But anyways, um, so he was, like I said, he was two years older than me. So he went to prom before I did. When we got together, um, it was right before right before like prom season or or whatever so he had of course already had his prom date blah blah blah, blah which was at the time I was told was his ex he was like you know I already you know we already paid for the dress already got the alterations everything blah blah, blah. hair and makeup is already done so you know I'm just take her because and I'm like I don't, I don't really care because I don't want to go to your prom anyway so fine whatever so he takes this girl to prom and um you know I don't I'm not calling him or blowing him up because for me like I want you to have a good time enjoy your prom I'm not about to be on your line for what like there's no point so um I didn't talk to him until the next day so he calls me like hey what's up and I'm like how was prom and he was like oh it was cool it was whatever like you know I hung out with the boys and I was like oh okay cool and it never dawned on me to ask like so what happened because everybody knows especially in high school and everybody knows like when you're going to prom like you're gonna have sex that's kind of like the premise not not the premise of prom but it's kind of like what happens at prom it's you're gonna have sex like that's just y'all dolled up and you feel good you look good y'all y'all you know you vibing you dance you have a good time with your friends and your homies that you probably will never see again some of them and some of them you probably you know you guys are going off to college so it's just like you know it's a vibe and you fall into this little situation where it's just like ooh, I'm, I'm i'm in the mood you know like so it never dawned on me like i don't know i was so freaking young and naive but it never dawned on me to be like okay so what really happened at prom but i never asked now i met him through like i said one of my really good friends she was like a sister to me like we were really close i was at her house i had a car so I, we i would take us to school every day like it was like you know that was like my sister and the guy that i was dating was her best friend her best friend that's how we met we met because um i think i was in the shower or something and he called her and he was like oh what are you doing she was like oh nothing me and my my friend or me and my sister like my sis is like chilling or whatever and he was like yo sis like what she look like he was like oh you know she's she was like you know she's light skin long hair she has braces he was like braces i'm coming over so he literally like pulled up to the house this is at night and i came out uh she was like oh my friend wants to meet you and i'm like okay whatever and i go outside and you know i see this guy 
tall he's like six six feet six one or whatever you know light skin like he's a little chunkier like he played football so he's a little chunkier so i'm like okay like i don't i didn't really have a type so it wasn't like oh no that's not my type because i didn't have a type i wasn't really dating um i wasn't really dealing with nobody so i was just like okay whatever like i'll talk to you no problem because he was really cool he had his own car i was like cool because i can't date no nigga on no bus because i'm not you're not catching no bus to my house taking too long I, I ain't got time for that if i want to go on a date you gotta we gotta get in my car no you're gonna pick me up and take me where I, where we going like we're not doing that so child um yeah so he ended up you know asking for my number oh can we go out blah 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 let's go to the movies cool at the time the movie death at a funeral was out in theaters so i don't even think i told my mom like mom i'm going on my first date like <laughs> it's just all unorganized like what was i thinking lord okay so um he picks me up i you know get something to wear he uh picks me up me we did a double date it was me him uh, my friend which was also like my sister and um one of his friends or his cousin or I can't remember who who was with her but anyways so we go to the movies um we watch the movie it was a good movie we come back so he drops us back off at the house she goes inside um and then or they're sitting outside the car talking and then me and him are in the car chopping it up you know get a little you know mm -hmm. and then you know I dip off go back in the house the next day he hits me he's like hey i really had a good time last night um i would love to like you know for you to come to my house i'm like okay so i tell her like okay we're gonna go over to his house so she's like let's go we go to his house you know me and him go to his room and we're chopping it up and you know it just one thing leads to another and blah 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 so that was like my first encounter with being so like dealing with somebody and actually being intimate with them which was like now that i look back on it i'm like girl what the fuck were you doing like huh I, what what why but anyways from that moment on we were together that was my boyfriend i was his girlfriend like we were together it was a whole relationship uh, we would call constantly text blah, blah 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 i was staying in la um so i would like go to his house after school or whatever or he would come over to see us like see me hang out with his best friend and hang out with me blah blah blah, blah. later on down the road my friend told me like oh um did you ask him a back to prom did you ask him about like prom and stuff and i was like nah, i don't really talk about it it was just like oh did you have fun yeah cool whatever next subject she was like oh yeah um i think something happened at prom and i'm like what do you mean something happened at prom like what happened at prom she was like um i think the ex-girlfriend gave him head i was like what what do you mean first of all i should have already like been like dead it because if your best friend is telling me this i'm just like i should have just been like nah I'm, I'm good with you i'm cool off you but instead i'm like no that's not what he told like a dummy no that's not what he told me blah 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 blah. and she's like well i mean that's just i mean i'm just letting you know because like you know we're family so me and him got into it i like brought it up to him he was like no that's not what happened who told you that and i'm like i'm not about to stitch on my friend so i'm like don't worry about who i told who told me that like you know and we got into it and i was like i'm not about to be dealing with no nigga that's about to be you know doing some weird shit and he was like no i ain't talked to her like i don't deal with her no more and that was that and from that moment like that was that like they were done um so i kind of like left it alone which I should have never left it alone because something in the back of my mind was like, you can't trust this nigga. Don't trust this nigga. But I don't know. For some reason, I just wanted to trust him. So um, later on down the road, we had a whole nother situation because there's a lot of situations with him. Like he was a serial cheater. Uh, we had another situation where there was this girl and it was so weird because I didn't know her. I didn't know of her. Like no nothing. But again this friend of mine is telling me you know oh there's this girl i think you know i think she likes him or whatever and i'm like okay so what like what is 
what that means to me I don't care if she likes him like he better not you know as long as he don't like her I don't care and she was like no I think something is like I think something is up and sh you know long story short the girl hits me up on Twitter like I think I believe she DM'd me or something because I was popping on Twitter back then like stupid popping she DM'd me and she was like um are you messing with my nigga now this is not a black girl she ain't black okay she's of latin descent i don't know if she was a mexican or if she was like dominican or something she's a latin descent so we just gonna say she's one of them and she goes <laughs> um why are you stalking my nigga huh who would one why are you saying nigga two who is your nigga and three i don't need to stalk nobody period and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to say his name or anyone's name, but um, I guess I can give him a nickname. Shit. Uh, what would a good nickname be? Play Play. Because a nigga be playing. Playing too fucking much. Okay. So she was like, yeah, uh, I saw you trying to, um, I saw you tweeting my nigga Play Play, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Play Play is yo nigga? Like, that's not what he was saying last night. And back then, my mouth was so slick. I don't know what the fuck, like, why. But, you know, I'm going to be like, bitch, first of all, don't come at me sideways because it's never the woman's fault in that situation. Like, if there's something going on and you have questions, question your nigga. Don't question me. And then if your nigga's like, oh, well, you know, she's blah, 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 blah. Then ask me, like, what's going on because he's telling me this because I am queen of receipts. I will have pictures, screenshot, everything. Like, I'm queen of receipts. I will pull them up quick, fast, send it over. I don't care. I will send and then I'll be done with him. You know what I'm saying? But that's not how she approached the situation. So, you know, she was like, oh, bitch, when I see you, I'm going to da-da-da-da-da. And I'm going to beat your ass. And I'm like, well, you catch the bus. I drive. So if you want, because I found out that she lived not too far from his house. I was like, if you want, I can pull up. No problem. Because I don't have a problem with you saying like you know he told me this he told me that and i'm like okay well this is what he said to me so i'm just done with him because i don't want to deal with this shit I'm, i don't i don't want to deal with the drama but instead of approaching me like a grown woman you approached me on some bullshit so i'm like now nah, you got me fucked up because you talk about you want to fight me over a dude that's cheating on both of us he cheated on both of us girl you look stupid as fuck like get out of here so we ended up like I never ended up seeing this girl like she was like oh no um I work on this day I'm like okay well what day are you free because I can pull up I don't have a problem or if you don't want me to know where you live I can we can meet up at his house because I don't have a problem and she was always like oh I'm working or oh I'm at school or blah, blah blah it was always an excuse and I was like I got time for this so I just like moved on now you would have thought by then I would have been like I'm not dealing with this nigga no more child i kept dealing with the nigga don't judge me okay this is a judgment free zone i kept dealing with the nigga and when i say i kept dealing with him like it got to a point like he moved away for college and i'm a senior now and um of course prom season my prom season's coming up between like his prom season and my prom season or me meeting him and my prom season i hadn't dealt with nobody else i wasn't talking to nobody else so um, I already had someone that I could have taken to prom because it was a family friend um, and I'm sure we would have had fun and we would have never had sex but we would have had fun and it would have just been like you know good vibes or whatever but he play 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 was like oh um, of course because me and his best friend still go to school together so he knows when my prom is he hit me up and he's like hey you know how's everything going and I'm just like hey, what you want nigga what do you want he's like you know I'm so sorry about how everything left off blah 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 blah, blah. I really love you I really miss you um being out here has really shown me that you know I want to be with you and I'm just like oh my gosh he loves and miss me oh let me be with him like a dummy but he was pretty much like I really want to take you to prom and I was like you want to take me to my prom like why he was like you know I really want to take you to prom and looking back on it I think he really wanted to take me to prom because he thought that I was gonna have if I went with someone else I was gonna sleep with them and I'm like first of all my body count was at 
too. I wasn't sleeping with nobody else. Like that was it. I was, it was going until college. I wasn't going to be doing anything. I was going to be chilling. And so he was literally like, I'm going to fly back and we're going to go to prom together. And I really have to take you to prom. Like, I don't care about nothing else. Like I have to take you to prom. And finally, I have to take you to prom. And I'm just like, okay, you can take me to my prom, whatever. And we were talking on and off, on and off, on and off. And you know, he had all the information about my prom and, you know, I would still hang out with him when he was in town. Um, and that was just like, that was just kind of it. We were, I won't say we were like full on together, but we were still like trying to figure it out. We got to a point where he was pretty much, he came, you know, came to LA so he can go to prom with me. We went to prom and... I was interacting with everybody else at prom and he was looking at me like why are you talking to these niggas at prom excuse me sir one these are my friends two how dare you over here comment commenting on anything I'm doing at prom especially because you was out there getting your little thing thing sucked on at your prom like we're not you know we're together but we're not together like stop it so um we ended up going back to his house there was after i was gonna get dressed at his house for after prom um and i think after prom was at like this club or something but i wasn't really i've never been a club type of person i don't really care to go to the club it's just not something that intrigues me i'm not really like excited about it my feet be hurting niggas be talking too much hot ass breath all in your face because they can't hear you because you're so far away because the music is loud i don't got time for that so i was just like you know what i kind of want to skip after prom um and we can just kick it at your house so we went back to his house you know i freshened up whatever and you know one thing led to another and then the next morning um I ended up staying at his house for like two or three days. His mom, she couldn't come to my uh, champagne party because she was actually on a cruise. So like we had the house to ourselves. So we was like living it up. It was, you know, food, turn up. Like we, we were having, you know, just me and him just having like a good time together. Child, I think like I went to, I went home on like the third or fourth day after prom and I get a message on twitter and i'm like who the fuck is dming me again it's the same raggedy bitch she dms me and she's like um can you call me and i'm like for what like what, what do we have to talk about and she's like um here's my number so she gives me her number i'll call her and it's her and a group of people in the back like talking in the background like a whole bunch of girls some catty shit and she's like um so my nigga told me that she tried to fuck on him at prom and i'm like girl what like this is still your nigga did you know that he that we went to prom together like that's weird why would you she was like First of all, my train of thought was like, why would you be okay with your nigga going to prom with someone else? And we're in the same, her and I are in the same, you know, we're the same age. And she was like, well, he told me that his mom forced him to go with you. And I was like, oh, you're, you're a dumbass. You're a dumbass. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, oh, is that what he told you? That's crazy. And she was like, yeah. And, um... He told me after prom he dropped you home and i was like damn that's crazy did he and she was like yeah and now you've been blowing up his phone blah 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 and i'm like where are you like if you believe this like i guess like if that's what you want to leave and then her friends are in the background like yeah bitch and you was over there trying to get on him and, da -da -da -da, and he don't ever want to be with you and you just be begging him for attention and i'm like do i do I really like it got to the point where she was just like talking shit and she was like yeah and I'm gonna fight you and that's why whenever we have sex we don't use condoms and, and I was like well maybe you should get tested because that's a little nasty if you know if you're on my line if you're on my line about this dude clearly this dude is doing something he has no business doing with someone else so why would you just be free willy you know humping with this guy no protection whatsoever you don't know what he got 
I don't know what he got. That's why I don't sleep with him no more. Like, I, I was good. I wasn't dealing with him anymore. I broke up with him after prom. And I was done with it. That was kind of like my goodbye. Sayonara. I broke up with him after prom and I was done with it. So the fact that she was like calling me and saying all this weird shit. I was like, but you care. I don't care no more. Like, you, your feelings is hurt. And she was like, um are you trying to call him on the other line are you trying to call because i'm at his house right now i've been at his house since um he dropped you off from prom i was like where were you at were you under the bed were you in the closet were you on the roof i'm confused because where were you when i was over there for three days like and i just got to the point where i was just like i'm not about to argue with you girl like either you're gonna line it up or you're not because i i'm tired of you playing on my phone talking all this shit because i called her when i called her it was from a black number now she had my number because she got it from his phone so do with that what you will but she had my number she had my contact information she could have just called me off top or hit me up off top she didn't have to be like oh well call me or did it and give me her number because i didn't need to have any contact with her she wasn't like a friend of mine um it came to a point where i found out i actually gained a friend from that situation because i found out that she tried to set set me up okay which is weird like who does that so i met this girl on twitter because back then again twitter was popping and this girl i'm not gonna say her name but um she was just like always comment on any tweet that i would tweet she would comment on my tweets and like she was cool as hell so we, we start having a conversation back and forth and then um you know i found she had a kid and i was like oh you have a kid and she's maybe like she's a little bit older than me so she was like um yeah, I have a daughter, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's cool. Like, how's how's it being a mom and you're young? And she's like, you know, we just start talking and we start, you know, she got to know me. And she was like, oh, you're cool as hell. And I was like, oh, thanks. And then she was like, I want to keep it 100 with you. And I'm like, what happened? And she was like, um, I didn't hit you up by coincidence. And I was like, okay because at that time i was getting so many people hitting me up on twitter because i would do like twitter after dark and i'd just be up tweeting all night or just whatever so it was so many people following me and like i was having conversations with so many different people that it never dawned on me like you asking like questions about me you're asking questions about dude and i mean i was asking her questions too about her life and you know whatever we ended up texting and she was like yeah um i didn't hit you up by coincidence um I need a nickname for this girl dang um i'm gonna call her thirsty so she was like uh thirsty and i are friends and i was like so why are you hitting me up then and she was like well we were friends but we're not friends anymore and i'm like okay i'm i don't follow like you just said y'all was friends and i am not friends no more like what's going on she was like thirsty asked me to hit you up and try to set you up so that she can get you jumped because you was dealing with play play and i was like really she was like yeah but then i got to know you you're cool as hell and then i found out you were belizean and i was like that bitch is crazy i'm not i'm not about to set her up and she was like, i have a kid to think about i can't be setting people up and that shit backfire on me blah, blah, blah. and this is what she's telling thirsty and thirsty got mad at her like just because she's belizean don't mean shit you my friend you supposed to set her up so i can get her jumped and you know she was like I i'm not doing that they ended up getting into a whole fight like i saw the video and everything was on twitter that shit was hilarious like they ended up falling out and fighting because this girl that hit me up on twitter was like i'm not about to set her up i'm not setting a bonnie up because you mad because this nigga is playing both of y'all how you mad at her because he's playing both of y'all that don't make no sense and she was like but you supposed to be my friend da, 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 da. and she was like well i'm not setting her up so take you know do what you want to do and they ended up fighting sure enough you know thirsty ended up getting beat up by you know homegirl is the friend's name homegirl's her name so thirsty got beat up by homegirl because homegirl was like i'm not i'm not doing that we're not gonna be setting people up we too over that and they fell out 
And from that moment on, I was like, yeah, I don't know about meeting people on Twitter. But I will say from like, even to this day, me and homegirl are still cool. Like she can call me, I can call her and we chop it up like nothing ever happened. Um, after that whole situation happened, I was like, this guy is toxic. I can't deal with this. I'm, I mean, I could deal with it, but I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the uncertainty of like, who are you talking to? Who are you dealing with? Who are you around? Are you cheating on me? Are you lying to me? Are you sleeping with all these girls? Are you using protection? Like these are questions that would go through my head every time I would, he would text me and be like, he would literally spell my name out. Each text message got an iPhone. Each text message bubble was a letter of my name. My name is long as hell. He would literally spell my name out to get my attention through text. It got to a point where I had to block that ass because I don't got time for that. Then he went from doing all that to like, I ended up meeting my sweetheart and my sweetheart was like, um, we ended up going to Belize. This is like fast forward, maybe like five years later because he would still hit me up from time to time like on Instagram like hey can we meet up can I you know can I take you out to dinner can we have a conversation I'm like what the hell we got to talk about what we got to talk about you cheated on me you did some raggedy shit we ain't got nothing to talk about like that's how I felt at that point like I was like there's nothing for us to talk about we don't have anything to relate on I have a relationship with your mother and if I want to talk to her then I hit her up or she wants to talk to me she hits me up and we check on each other and that's it but I don't want nothing to do with you because your ass is raggedy <laughs> he um, would DM me though on Instagram um, I think I blocked him on my phone so even if he was messaging me I would have never seen it but he would DM me on Instagram and be like um, you know can I take you out to dinner can we talk and I'm like we don't have nothing to talk about and then he would be like oh okay well I just want to you know how are you and I'm good and that's that and I would end the conversation and that would be that so fast forward to like I said like five years later um i had chandler by then and i ended up going to belize chandler my sweetheart and myself went to belize when chandler was like six months for my dad's wedding and i remember so vividly because i was on snapchat but i wasn't on snapchat like that heavy but i got on snapchat and i had a snapchat from him and i'm like why are you snapping me like that's weird shout my sweetheart was standing right behind me and he was like, you know, because we were walking into this room. So he was standing behind me while people were talking. And so he was facing like my, you know, my phone direction. And I opened up the Snapchat video and it's a video of Play Play playing with his thang thang. I was like, uh-uh, exit block i had to block that out so fast i was like please don't make my sweetheart tell me he told he saw that i hope he did not see that like because it just at that point you're not only disrespecting my sweetheart who you don't give a fuck about which okay whatever you're not only disrespecting him you're disrespecting me because who the fuck told you that was cute who told you that was okay that's thirsty you and thirsty should have been together and after all that said and done, you and Thirsty not even together? You was cheating on me with this girl and y'all not even together no more? That like, it really just got on my nerves. Like, girl, you was trying to fight me over a nigga that you're not even with? Girl, bye. Bye. Ain't got time for you. So, I, this is my story on like my first heartbreak. So I say all that to say, situations that we go through when we're younger it feels like it's a never-ending thing like we're never gonna get over this heartbreak we're never gonna find someone else to love us we're never gonna be good enough for someone to love us or treat us half as good as we want to be treated or we deserve to be treated but that's just simply not true it's not true i have felt plenty of times like i just was never going to meet somebody that was gonna love me um, especially after dealing with a situation like that, it was just so much more that happened in that relationship that I haven't even touched on that it was just like traumatic. It was traumatizing. And when you're dealing with someone who has shown you time and time again that you are not one important enough for them to do right by you and two, they make you feel like you are always going to be less than 
the next because at one point it got to a point where he was like trying to compare me to the next bitch don't do that like why are you doing that to someone that you supposedly love supposedly want to be with you don't compare them like you don't ever do that because you just are like diminishing someone's character and you know knocking out their self-esteem like self-esteem was on non-existent at one point because you start to feel like if this person can't let me write then nobody can let me write but again that's just simply not true so i have a couple of do's and don'ts when dating when making life decisions and this can be for the young and for the old because a lot of people are still making these same mistakes and they are well into their 30s 40s and 50s so first things first do not start dating until you are aware of who you are where you are in life what you like what you dislike um what you will and will not settle for and I'm not saying settle as in like, oh, well, sex is like this or I feel like he cares more about his video game. I'm talking about like settle as in like, this is how I want to raise my children. Well, I don't believe that we should raise children like that. Like stuff like that. You guys need to be on the same level do you guys want to have kids and yes even at a young age you need to think like that because i know people are probably like no you don't yes you do because you're sleeping with these people or you're sleeping with this guy and if you're having sex with him guess what sex equals babies or stds or both you know so you want to make sure that you're putting yourself in a predicament where you're not going to lose simple as that you're not going to lose everything that you do from this moment on is going to benefit you in some way shape or form and you're going to benefit them and you guys are going to build together and you guys are going to be a phenomenal power couple if you're with someone and they tell you oh you ain't shit oh you're lazy oh you're ugly oh you're fat oh you're... and they all they do is belittle you and talk down on you and you looking at them like but nigga you ain't doing that much better than me how you talking shit about me and your shit ain't together that is not the person for you because anybody that loves you is not going to talk down on you, call you out your name, treat you like shit. They're going to be like, you know what, baby, I see you're lacking here. Let me help you. Let me help you elevate. Or you can be like, look, babe, I see you lacking there. Let me help you. Let me let me help you elevate. And that is what a relationship is all about. Moving forward. If you're not with someone who motivates you to do better in life, and I'm not saying like motivate you by talking shit about you because oh well that's how i motivated people talk shit about me my family talk shit about me my whole life and now look at me i'm doing better no if you're with someone and all they do is say like well you ain't never gonna be shit because you don't do this you don't do that blah 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 blah, blah. well guess what they're not breathing life and you know resilience and strength into you they're breeding doubt into you and um you know just destroying the person that you are and the person that you could possibly potentially be so you need to be with someone who is going to push you and elevate you and love you even when you're not at your best like sometimes i don't feel like getting out the bed i am exhausted i have work i have school i have a business i have a child i have a husband i have a pet i have so much stuff going on and sometimes i just want to lay my black ass in the bed and i want to sleep but you know what my sweetheart does he gives me one day of that one day of laying my black ass in the bed and most likely i'm on my cycle when that happens like first day of cycle and that should be killing okay back hurting bloated all type of stuff and that's okay one day i'm laying in the bed after that it's like okay come on babe let's get up let's go for a walk let's get up even if i'm going through something and i feel like i'm down or i'm going through depression or something because people get seasonal depression out here in colorado it gets really really cold and you can't get out in the sun and feel that heat like you can in california so sometimes like you might get through a little you know go through a little seasonal depression or things just aren't going the way you want it to go and you know what he does 
he gets up and he's like, come on, babe, let's go walk on the treadmill or let's go outside and mow the lawn or let's go for a drive. or any, And he motivates me to get out the bed and do something with myself. Even if I'm like, I don't want to do shit. He's like, no, nope, come on, let's go. Let's go do something. And the same thing with him. I give him one day of feeling like down or out. And then after that, it's like, all right, let's go to the basketball courts and let's go play ball i might not want to play ball because i might be cramping or my head might be hurting or i'm hungry or something but i'm like come on let's go do something i do something that he likes to do let's motivate you to push forward so if you are not with someone who is motivating you to do better be better um grind it out elevate and work towards something that will benefit not only you but benefit them but mostly benefit you because if you're with someone that is only with you because you benefit them but you're not you know they're not benefiting you then that's not a equally yoked relationship as well i have had so many friends who have dated people who they were like i really like him or i love him and blah 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 blah, blah. and i'm like okay but once they break up i'm like okay so what did you love about them or if they're in a bad space i'm like okay so what do you love about this person what are the pros and cons of being with this person and they're like sex i'm like so sex is the pro what else is another pro and they're stuck they don't know i'm like does he motivate you uh not really um does he push you to do better or is he elevating you or is he like you know what you have time off right now you're not working enroll in some classes get some classes done or oh you are done with your classes enroll in this program and see if you can start working here or is he like oh i saw this job listing that i think you'd be perfect for maybe if you apply you know we can work on your resume he's not doing none of that he's nothing N nothing he's not bringing money to the table he's not there's nothing that you're benefiting from this relationship because believe it or not a relationship is give and take but it's also yes what can you do for me and then what can i do for you and if we can't do shit for each other then why the hell is we dealing with each other simple as that it's not always you know a physical thing because yes granted being with someone who can make your toes curl and crack that back, it's great. But when you're 50 years old, <laughs> when you're 60 years old and your back is broke because you didn't got to crack so many times and you're just not the same in certain areas, what else do you guys have to offer? And I think for me, our relationship, like my relationship with Play Play was mostly off of sex. And it got to a point where I was just like, if I'm not having sex with you, like, what are we talking about? We're not talking about nothing. OK, well, I and it, it made it so much easier once I took the intimacy out of the relationship for me to be like, this ain't worth it. It's not worth it. There's no reason for me to be going through this, crying, depressed, fluctuating in weight like i'm losing my temper with everybody i'm talking reckless to everybody because my mood is just all thrown off there was no point like i think that relationship was there to teach me so much about myself and teach me about my ability to i learned that i was a sticker in there like i stick in there i stick it out i you know i make sure that everything that i pour into this at the end of the day is it worth it like i am going to stay with you until it's ride or die like i was queen ride or die like no in 2022 we can't just be ride or dies for motherfuckers that just got us out here dying like <laughs> i cannot be a ride or die for anybody who is just gonna let me die <laughs> like literally i can't do it like and i feel like once we get to a certain age, like at, at 28, I definitely won't be no ride or die for nobody that's going to have me, you know, that wants me to die. They're not even trying to help me get better or, or you know, elevate. We can't do that. And I'm married, so, you know, that's a little different. But I have people in my family or people in my life who are just like, but I love him or I love her. And I'm like, okay, but what do you love? Like is the pros and cons list 
is on the pros and cons list is there more pros than cons or is it one pro and the rest is cons and they're like shit the the pros and cons list is looking real cons and cons list okay so what are you holding on to because i am a firm believer in you are not going to be able to elevate in life god is not going to put you in a position where you will elevate if you still got this raggedy ass baggage with you it's not gonna happen and there's been so many instances where people have had so many opportunities so many opportunities to just like elevate and they missed it by like a thread and when they realize they'd like look back and they realize like why am i missing out on all these opportunities i'm overqualified for this job i'm overqualified for this whatever for this certificate and i'm just not getting the opportunity you have to turn around and look at yourself and be like maybe it's not the opportunity that i'm not qualified for maybe the people that i am holding on to this baggage that I have is what's going to bring me down and help me destroy my opportunity. So you have to let those people go in order for your opportunity to actually be your opportunity. I have had so many friends where they were in these toxic ass relationships like toxic me too, toxic ass relationships. And as soon as we broke up with that nigga, as soon as that nigga was gone out of our lives, it was like, it's raining men and it's raining opportunity. Like, you don't realize how much someone can hold you down and you don't elevate or you don't grow while being with someone until you take a step back. And then you really reevaluate your life and reevaluate what's been going on. You're like, damn, this person really had me fucked up. And I had myself fucked up for dealing with this person for so long. So I think that as a don't for today's list, the don't is don't miss your opportunity to elevate and grow and flourish because you stuck on some old dick. Don't do it. Don't do it because it's not worth it. And a lot of people forget that there are billions of people in this world this one person that is sending you through emotional roller coasters and got you crying and depressed and losing weight and gain or gaining weight or emotionally eating or not eating at all or you going through it with your family you're arguing with everybody snapping at everybody because you just are that stressed this one person that's causing all this that is not your one person in life that is your one person to get your ass away from they were there to teach you a lesson and now it's time for you to elevate and move on and who knows later on down the road you might meet somebody and be like why was i stressing over this one raggedy ass nigga when i could have been dealing with prince charming over here all this time you're not going to meet somebody that actually is right for you because you're not in the right space you're not in the right mind space. You're not in the right emotional space. You're not in the right mental space because you're dealing with the wrong people. So you got to cut those people off. Cut those people off that are treating you wrong, that are talking down on you, that are not reading life and positivity and love into you and breathe it into yourself. I went through a phase where I was like a single for a year, I think, after you know play play i was single for a year and i just focused on me i focused on me i gained my confidence back i was like in shape um i was just really enjoying being me i fell in love with myself and once i fell in love with myself like you can tell me shit you can tell me nothing and then i met my sweetheart and then it was a wrap <laughs> it was a wrap so that was my little experience with heartbreak which it really taught me so much about myself. It taught me how to love what I will tolerate, what I won't tolerate, um, who I am as a person. Am I a giver? Am I a taker in a relationship? And I'm very much a giver. Um, and what I will be willing to not necessarily sacrifice, but 
kind of like balance out in order to meet someone halfway compromise it taught me how to compromise and not compromise in a bad way because compromise isn't always bad and when you're in a relationship especially in a marriage you will compromise on certain things like you will compromise on who sleeps on what side of the bed or you will compromise on what to have for dinner or you know compromising is not always bad but once you start compromising who you truly are at the core that's when it's no longer good so that is all for this episode i really hope you guys enjoyed it I definitely want to do more story times because this was kind of like a story time of my heartbreak in high school and how it kind of affected my life as an adult now and what it taught me in my adult life. Um, so if you guys are interested in more story times, definitely let me know and I can definitely make that happen because your girl got stories out the yin gang, okay? Um, and yeah, that is all for this episode. I can't wait for you guys to hear next week's episode and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.